Ngayon po, kaya tutungo po tayo sa isang formal welcome. Uh, ang mag-welcome po sa atin ngayon ay ang Vice President ng uh, Sangguni Ang Laiko ng Pilipinas for the Visayas. But she is also the the Chairman of the Archdiocese of Cebu Council of the Late Commission on the Late. Kinakinokore ko po ang sarili ko sapagkat sila po ay isang komisyon. Yan. Iba po yung council lang at sila ay isang Archdiocese and Commission. And uh, that, that chairman is uh, Sister Febarino uh, to formally welcome us in today's uh, regional uh, conversation. Sister Fe? Thank you, Brother June. And uh, in behalf of the Cebuano speaking region in the Visayas, I am uh, privileged to welcome you all and to host these uh, conversations. Uh, this is our fourth the season of creation, Conversations 4. Uh, with the theme here, the cry of the earth. So um, we are uh, happy to, uh, to host these uh, conversations. And I wish to welcome all of you, brothers and sisters, uh, Laiko and uh, of course, Bishop Abilio and the other bishops and priests joining us later um, from Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao, and even from Australia and other parts of the world who may be listening or watching us later uh, via Facebook. Uh, live uh, through like Sangguni Ang Laiko ng Pilipinas and uh, Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines Facebook page. So once again, uh, our uh, we wish to welcome you all, and we pray that uh, we will be have a, we will have a fruitful conversations today. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Fe. Nakakatuwa naman ang ganda ng ngiti ni Sister Fe. Parang <laughs> walang hapon. parang walang problema sa Cebu. Sa parang wala nga eh. <laughs> Wala talaga. Ang lockdown ngayon at ang dami po mga barangay din na talagang kinakailangan ng tulong at yun po ay kanilang ipinagre-raise ng pagkain, pinaghahanda nila ng mga pagkain. Kaya nakakatuwa na napaka-generous ng mga kapatid nating mga mga laiko na kahit ang dami pinagdadaanan, nakangiti pa rin. Ganun po ang tawag sa atin ng Panginoon. Amen. Ngayon po, Ngayon po, tatawagin na natin to uh, have an opening message para sa ating lahat po. Ang isa pang may pinagdadaanan. At ang pinagdadaanan niya ay para ding, parang walang pinagdadaanan. At, ngunit na gusto nating hingan sa opening message ngayon, ang ating mahal na apostolic administrator ng Archdiocese Manila, si Bishop Padilio. Bishop, kumusta po kayo? Bishop, po, po, Bishop. Okay, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at uh, uh, thank you for coming to this uh, regular meeting that we have every Saturday to bring us together in this common conversations that we have in order that we can respond uh, to the signs of the times. At salamat po sa inyong mga panalangin Nakita niyo naman, wala rin mga kong problema. Ang test na naman nagsasabi na may problema daw ako. <laughs> no, pero actually, I'm as uh, my normal self. So, nagkakwarantine lang ako. And uh, thank you to the... Uh, let us thank the technology that kahit na nakakwarantine, we can still uh, be in touch with each other through this kind of uh, meetings. So, ngayon po, hinaharap nga natin yung problema natin sa... Um, sa COVID pero wag natin kakalimutan na may isa pa tayong malaking problema na palagi natin nandiyan and that is uh, the cry of the earth no, na pa, ang ating pananagutan sa ating uh, lipunan sa ating kapaligiran and uh, the coronavirus has not erased our problem of ecology or the problem for the environment <laughs> So, wag po natin kakaligtaan ito at sana tutugunan din natin. Kaya nga, inimita po natin itong ating mga kapatid sa Cebu in order to enlighten us about the cry of the earth. At sana po, pagkatapos ng ating uh, mga inputs sa bawat grupo po ninyo as families, no, as households, and even as communities, we can try to craft what would be our response to this emergency that we are in. At ang problema po ng kalikasan ay emergency. Kaya sana po matutugunan po natin. So welcome po to this conversation. 
Yan yan. Salamat po, um, Bishop Abilio. Ngayon po, ay tutuloy na tayo sa ating uh, topic at ang magpapakilala po <coughs> ng uh, ating uh, speaker okay, ay isa sa mga LICO board member. Siya po nga, he will acknowledge a few guests, especially from the Visayas kasi may mga ilan na bago wala pa lang nating nakasama ngayon. At sana gusto nating ma-welcome na mabuti yung mga kasamahan nating bago ngayon, lalo na yung nanggagaling sa Visayas. And also, to, to introduce to us our uh, Uh, guest speaker. So I turn you over to Dr. Rene Bulliser, who is also a LICO board member and also the uh, uh, president of the Catholic Physicians Guild of the Philippines. Dr. Rene? Yes, bayang uh, hapon na itong tanan. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Maupay nga kulop sa iyo dida. Uh, Mahayong hapon gid sa tanan. So wherever you are sa Pilipinas and uh, outside the country, good afternoon to each one of us. Now, uh, for Visayas, we have four arts dioceses and katursi ka mga dioceses. So, we to say na we don't have any representative today from Talibun, Tagbilaran, from Borungan, Kalbayo, Katarman, Romblon, Kalibo, Rojas, Capi, San Carlos, Haro, and Nabal. But we have this afternoon joining with us our delegates, of course, from aside from Cebu. Our president sa uh, Council of the Lady sa uh, Maasin Diocese, si Dr. Jerome Palir. Sa Dumagiti, atong presidente sa uh, Council of the Lady, si... Sir William Ablong. Then from the President nato sa Bakulod, walang iba kundi si Mrs. Berge Lopo. Then musunod siya mga quarter to three at the President sa Council Lady sa San Jose de Antique, no? sa Panay, si Sir Vic Puylan. And musunod karon any times ang President sa Kabangkalan. Of course, ang atong Archdiocesan President sa Council of the Lady sa Archdiocese sa Palo, si Dr. Edna Uh, yes, so, so ito, it's one of us. Good afternoon. Pag-usap ka na itong tanan. Welcome. It's a very beautiful sunny afternoon. So at this point in time, akong present nito atong pinanggang uh, guest speaker will uh, discuss to us how should we care for our common home. Ilabi na ang hilak, syagit sa atong pinanggang inahan nga gitawag og Mother Earth. Okay, so ang atong, the person will talk to us everything about what we need to know about Earth is the for more for me so far i know her for more than two decades na uh, fighting for water ecology environment not only for cebu but even outside of cebu no she was our uh, executive director and past president of the so called cebu uniting for sustainable water foundation as we know pag ang cebu has already more than a million people Metro Cebu with other three, four cities surrounding it. So we really need water is scarce ng too big sa Cebu uh, Subong. And si Unbol himself as consultant of the Cebu Arts Decision Commission on Environmental Concern and found, uh, former trustee the Foundation of the Philippine Environment and the Water Advisory Committee of the Office of the Mayor, including the Provincial Water Resource Authority. So with that involvement niya in environment and ecology and water preservation, of course, that's the reason why for more than two decades also she earned a lot of awards, merit, etc. Like, I can just give you two. She was a recipient of the most outstanding individual of Cebu City, yung 75 Uh, anniversary ng Charter Day of Cebu. And of course, she was also awarded as the outstanding alumni of the University of San Carlos. Of course, she graduated there. No? So, without much ado, please help me welcome our dear resource speaker this afternoon. Welcome, architect Ma'am Sukuro Boromeo Atiga. Welcome, Ma'am. Thank you, Doc, for the kind introduction. Uh, it's a privilege to be here to share with you our experience here in Cebu, in the Visayas, which, uh, which is composed of a cluster of islands. Unlike the big island of Luzon and Mindanao, the situation in the Visayas is much different. So we will uh, give you more or less an overview of what we are doing, uh, especially as we come together as stakeholders to converge for collective impact. So government alone cannot do it. We cannot just pinpoint because you did not do your part. We all are called to take care of Mother Nature. So uh, I hope this uh, talk will enlighten 
isn't the others who are not so conversant about the technical. Uh, that's why Mampe warned me that less of the technical and more of the spirituality. Thanks, Mampe. So, uh, last February, uh, we were uh, privileged to host the, the Cebu Archdiocese Commission on Environmental Concerns to hold a conference uh, which we uh, themed Journey, Hope, and Act Together in the Face of Climate Emergency. That was in partnership with CBCP through Father Lucas and other NGO partners. So that's where I met uh, Sir June Cruz uh, of WeGen and some other enthusiasts like Oshana, who is into the coastal and marine conservation. So uh, without much ado, let's go. It's uh, about more than <laughs> 150 slides. So we'll just go fast because I'm also a visual person. If I don't see pictures, I easily forget. <laughs> okay, next please. So uh, we will start off with the uh, seven environmental principles, the laws of nature, because uh, more often we just take things for granted when, when it comes to the gift of nature. So let's familiarize ourselves to know what these resources are and what our responsibilities. Then the second is the false stewardship. Because as I said, we as stakeholders, uh, we are all called to do our part. Then uh, on the ecological spirituality, uh, we also can share with you some initiatives like uh, the Franciscans had a conference here about 2016 and it was about the environment. It was with Philippine um, Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation with the SVD. And then, and we share with you the initiatives of civil society organizations, what we are doing in partnership with government, the academe, the private sector, and uh, all those who are really concerned about stewardship. Next, please. So this is more or less how it was, talking about the highlights, the issues here in the Visayas, uh, basically, uh, the Archdiocese of Cebu is not just Cebu province, but a little of Leyte and a little also of Negros Oriental. So it's headed by Father Murphy Sarsona. So we were privileged uh, to have uh, Archbishop Palma, who is very supportive to our cause. By the way, Archbishop is also the commissioner uh, of the Central Cebu uh river basin management so uh a way of balancing different agenda of different leaders then father lucas was with us uh bishop uh benito was also here to share with us their initiatives in negro so uh it was a different kind of conference because it those were not technical discussions but the Makalipang was a way of looking at scriptures and reflecting on God's message from those lines. And then uh, also deepening in terms of what I could do and then offering it in terms of prayer. So the Lord will bless our efforts. Next. So uh, there, uh, before that, uh, there was a meeting among bishops and they agreed that here in the Visayas, the five uh, salient themes that we look at that uh, are challenges and some concerns that need to be addressed are climate change and disaster management, which we all experience, and then renewable energy, water security and sustainability, uh, solid waste management, I think this is universal, and then marine and coastal resource conservation. Next. Yeah, so we hope that uh, with this, we could go into the 
formulation of modules for education on eco spirituality uh, for all of our uh, parishes. And then uh, we will also have a scorecard to see best performances in terms of their advocacies and tangible projects. And then we also would like to have the center that will bind us together to form as the secretariat for succeeding uh, events. So there's continuity in what we are doing. Next, please. So uh, these are some of the plans. Uh, we have started after the conference during that month, but because of the lockdown, we're a bit uh, concerned, uh, constrained, but then we hope that with the Zoom and this uh, communication devices that are available, we could still keep in touch and be effective. Next. So uh, this is uh, Pope Francis calling us to care for our common home, Mother Earth. So it's our responsibility as gifted constituents of Mother Earth that we come together. By the way, we also have our interfaith group that are working together with us because we only have one God, uh, one home, and then we are one family. So that's uh, ecumenism also. Next. So what is sustainability? It is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So our responsibility is not just for us now, for our children, but our children's children as well. So that's the intergenerational responsibility, looking beyond just the present. Okay. Sustain. No, we, we don't. Sustainability have means that things can keep going, can sustain themselves, can continue into the future, and go on forever. From a human perspective, sustainability for our planet means that it can continue to do what it was designed to do. Provide fresh air, clean water, produce food, and allow us all to have a high quality of life forever. Unsustainability means that it cannot, and that is where we are now. Twenty years ago, scientists in Sweden developed a definition for sustainability with four basic principles. These can be seen as the care instructions for our planet. If we follow them, it is good for our planet. And because we are part of the system that is our planet, it's good for us too. The care instructions are as follows. Reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and heavy metals. Reduce our dependence on synthetic chemicals that persist in nature. Reduce our destruction of nature. Ensure we are not stopping people globally from meeting their needs. Demand for the Earth's services, clean air, water, food, increases as the population increases and living standards rise. But the Earth's ability to provide these services is declining because of the way we're living. In our search for prosperity, growth, and success, we are destroying the system that we as humans are completely dependent upon, nature. We humans have become a threat to our own way of life. The earth is a system and everything is connected, society, environment, and economy. To live sustainably, we need to follow the four care instructions and apply them to everything we do at home and at work. If we can follow these care instructions, we can work together to be sus Sustainability means that things... You can refer to that uh, in your file. So we will just go fast forward, okay? Um, you can just watch that later. But in terms of sustainable development goals, there are a lot. It talks about different ecosystems, which I will expound la later on about land, biodiversity, water, but it also talks about people. So it also addresses uh, poverty reduction and then the needs of uh, resilient communities in the midst of climate change. Uh, I would like to your, bring to your attention uh, goal number 17.
Pamba Jeng, Ajak Kupoba. Sige po, baka po naputol si Tita Bajing. Ang sila sabi niya, goal number 17 is partnership for the goals. Ang ibig sabihin, isa sa mga sustainable development goals. Not just with government, but each. Are you there, ma'am? Pambajing, you are on mute. Nakamute po kayo. Nakamute. Thank you. So, we proceed. Uh, the next slide, please. Can we proceed? Yeah, so anyway, for sustainable development, there are uh, three pillars, which are social equity, economic efficiency, and most important is the environmental sustainability. Without environmental sustainability, uh, we cannot proceed. It's impossible to have life here on Earth. So that's why... We all contribute towards green initiatives, so we're able to contribute on our own, like contributing. Uh, there was a conference that I attended by Brahma Kumari, and the speaker said, uh, creating a climate of change starts with me. So uh, if we look at these concerns, we have to look at them in an integrated approach. Uh, just an example, look at the problem we are facing now. It's a problem about health, the epidemic. But we see how, how many people are really suffering from hunger because they have lost their means of livelihood. And the business are very concerned about this. So when we look at solutions, it's not just one phase, but an integrated approach to looking at uh, challenges. Next. Next. So uh, these are the seven environmental principles. Uh, uh, we have to know and be guided by this when we pursue our different programs. First, nature knows best. So we cannot go against nature. Like uh, if we have water flowing from the ridge, it really goes down. We cannot let water go up to the mountains. It's very difficult. So in terms of processes, in terms of landforms, in terms of water resources management, we should be guided by natural processes because uh, that's the best for sustainability. All life forms are important. So we are all interconnected. Uh, before, when we look at uh, caterpillars eating the leaves of plants, we would like, uh, at once we would get that caterpillar and kill it. But uh, recently, I already learned that, ooh, this is a food plant. So uh, we don't uh, tear down that. Uh, but uh, we cherish how different forms of animals also contribute to the sustainability of the forest cover, the plants that we grow in our farms, and later I, I have some pictures. Everything is connected to everything else. So we are all interconnected, just like the web of life, you know? If one string is destroyed, it will really destroy the entire web. So uh, symbiotic relationships and co-management are the things because it's not you alone, but everybody gets to benefit or 
the others also get to suffer from the consequence of this degradation of ecosystems. So our life here on Earth is temporal. Everything changes. That's why I, I used to take pictures of clouds and then my grandchild would say, Ma, you already have a thousand pictures of the clouds. I said, this, this formation will never come again. So it's something temporal. You have to capture it. But uh, also, as we are born, we start aging. So those are the changes. There's also the evolution, how man... Uh, became uh, an animal here on earth, but of a higher standing than the animals because we are answerable for the maintenance and management for these. Uh, everything must go somewhere. So just like our garbage, we don't realize that if we just leave our garbage there unattended, this would also uh, pollute the rivers and also flow towards the sea. And so the coastal um, organisms will also get to eat the plastic that we uh, throw. Earth is a finite earth. Uh, Arch um, Attorney Tony Oposa, a very good friend of mine, says, by the way we consume the way we exploit resources, we will need nine planets to be able to sustain our needs and want because it's really too much. So we have to set limits. Bear in mind what, uh, what's the carrying capacity of these natural systems. We don't go beyond. So nature is beautiful. We are stewards of God's creation. Uh, also, nature is a source of... Uh, scientific studies, uh, support systems, and it's also a source of inspiration, relaxation, as you view the beautiful scenery, the borrowed landscape. You don't have to own it. You can enjoy the view. Next. Next slide, please. So uh, we could just go faster because these are illustrations that I already mentioned. So uh, uh, one after the other. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, nature knows best. We look at the natural landscape. We see the mountains. We see the rivers. We see the forest cover. Also the beautiful birds and insects that fly. Uh, without knowing that these uh, animals also help us in terms of food security, in terms of seed dispersal and pollination. So everything is really interconnected with the given uh, ecological systems that nature has so provided us. Next. So uh, the common practice before among our ancestors was kaingin, slash and burn. But then uh, now uh, burning is discouraged and what, what we do is we do composting to be able to uh, return uh, the nutrients uh, that uh, are on the earth. Uh, from the litter, it's transformed into uh, nutrients by the microorganisms. So that's the food chain. And so uh, practices of uh, pesticides using chemicals is not really advocated. We can do composting and uh, malata against the deep malata. So we should make it a practice at the household level. Next, uh, also there's a purpose for each of these species that uh, nature has so provided. They have their roles. And so uh, we just do not uh, dispose of them, but we would like that they also would be taken care of in a nice way. We just cannot uh, eliminate them totally because there's also a purpose for their existence. Next slide, please. 
So all life forms are important from the very small insects to the large trees, to the buffaloes, to the uh, zebras and all that. And so all of these contribute to the sustainability of the ecosystem in terms of providing us the different benefits, which I will discuss next. So when we look at the environment, next slide, please. Uh, we look at different components, the abiotic, which are the inorganic, uh, non-living things like the landforms, the, the water, uh, and then looking at the biotic, uh, we look at the plants, the animals, the microorganisms, all those, those are living things. So we coexist with them. One cannot go without the other. So uh, we see that we are all interconnected and interdependent. Next slide, please. Uh, then uh, if we only knew to put value into these things that we enjoy that are free from nature, then we will not be so harsh as to damage our surroundings. So the most common is just the material provision for our food, clothing, shelter, the medicine, and all of these uh, materials that we can use as raw materials for construction, for housing, and all that. But what we take for granted are the regulating functions like regulation of water flow. If we do not have forest, all of the rain will just flow into the sea without an opportunity to use these water resources. And then the trees also help uh, modify the microclimate. In the midst of global warming when it's so hot, and then there are uh, seasons when uh, the rain is just too much that there's flooding. Then uh, these are more or less regulated if we had forests, if we had soil and water conservations in the uplands, if we just uh, use a water treatment instead of just throwing pollutants into the rivers and our surroundings. And so these have a purpose. Even those wetlands that we see, uh, most of them are converted into subdivisions because they seem to be wastelands. But these wetlands are also sponges when there's excess rain, then these wetlands would absorb those. And these wetlands also have organisms that can coexist with the dry land. So, uh, as I've said, the cultural aspect, source of inspiration for recreation, a spiritual uh, uh, experience when you meditate uh, facing the sea and the mountains and during sunrise and sunset, it's a very beautiful experience. Next slide, please. So, uh, what we have to know when we talk of uh, ecological systems, as I mentioned already, their services, it's also looking at the well-being of humanity, human beings in terms of health, in terms of basic needs, in terms of uh, safety as well. So uh, these are the two things that we uh, target when we look at biodiversity conservation, especially during this time of climate change. Next, please. So as I've said, human well-being, the economy, uh, natural solutions, ecosystem. I will discuss with you ecosystem-based climate change adaptation later. And then uh, looking at future generations, intergenerational responsibilities. We are all answerable to the Lord for the gifts of creation. So there is also disparity among the rich and the poor. So uh, what we, the Laudato see also looks at caring for the, the poor, the marginalized communities who have less options than those who can afford. And then those who are forced to look for better opportunities somewhere else away from their families, they also have their needs. And then uh, 
I remember Ina Lopez when she gave us a talk before she died. She she had a list of many plants, and then she said that these are the plants that have been uh, brought outside of the Philippines, and then they make uh, medicine out of these, and that's bioprospecting, and we buy those uh, medicines very expensive when they can just be grown in your garden. So edible and medicinal. So these are the ecosystem. Everything is interconnected. Uh, I will discuss to you later the ridge to reef approach when we look at the management, an integrated way of managing our environment. Next. So this is the reality now with all of the abuses, air pollution, too much uh, uh, burning of fossil fuels and uh, waste uh, scattered all over. This is now what we have. These disasters that we did not experience before. We used to have the rainy and the dry season, but now uh, there are instances when we have the earthquake, the typhoons, sea level rise. And so uh, we also have to consider how we are able to mitigate and adapt to these effects of climate change. Next. Next, please. Uh, so, see, uh, before, I, I just remembered that when we talk of floods, that's Manila. We never had floods here in Cebu, but now it's the reality. You see this uh, during the rainy season and extended periods, and so the low-lying areas are flooded. So what do we do to be able to address? So there are mitigating measures as well as adaptation. And so, as I've said, everything changes. Uh, evolution and the natural processes, they change in forms and uh, also the living conditions also change. Next. Next, please. So uh, this is what people do. They apply chemicals for fertilizers and pesticides uh, to be able to have more harvest instead of the usual two seasons, harvesting seasons. They want to harvest as much as five, everything instant. So what happens is we destroy the microorganisms and all of the natural uh, elements that give us the food that we need all for the sake of rapid production to meet the needs of growing population. So, uh, yeah, this, as I've said, every goes, everything goes somewhere with the pollutants that are from the domestic, industrial, and the transportation. Uh, this is what we get. We have acid rain, and then uh, also we have to look at the air quality as well, water quality management and water management, air quality as well. Next. So this is what I mentioned. If we don't take care of our waste, it will all redound to the coastal area and also affect the coastal and marine ecosystems without our knowledge. They are also suffering from all of those waste. Next, please. So uh, this, as I've said, the Sayas has a different uh, ecosystem uh, as compared to Luzon and Mindanao. So we see here the importance of coastal and marine conservation because we are made of islands. Uh, Cebu in particular, we are elongated. And most of the inland on the central portion, the ridge, is uh, mountainous, so the livable areas that are relatively flat are on the coastal areas. So, while the coastal areas are also sensitive in terms of the limestone formation, uh, those uh, like, for example, uh, the waste that we generate in these coastal areas would really affect the marine ecosystem. And so, there's not much of livable areas for settlements and areas because there's not much relatively flat the way. The mountainous are supposed to be for conservation. 
Next slide, please. So is that okay, the timing for you? <laughs> Ours is a finite earth, no? So uh, the, the trend now is to use, reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle for our waste and because uh, segregated waste can be a resource. But when it comes to energy sources, uh, we want to lessen our dependence on fossil fuels, on coal-fired thermal plants, and re resort to renewable energy, just like hydro, geothermal, uh, solar, like WeGen is providing solar panels. And so those are the technologies that are uh, ways of lessening our dependence on uh, fossil fuels and pollutants in the air. Slide, please. Next slide. So, uh, yes, uh, with the demands for more settlements, uh, we have encroached into fragile ecosystems without our knowledge. And so uh, we, as I've said, we have to establish limits and resort to a change of lifestyle that is not consumeristic, but we optimize the resources that we have and we use renewable energy. Uh, in, in Ilocos, they have the windmills and then so uh, popularized are the solar panels, even in churches. So Father Murphy has the solar panels in his Pahak, um, parish, parish in Mactan. So likewise, we would like to encourage communities and industries to tap these renewable sources of energy. Next. So this is what we all have to understand. All of the gifts of life, of nature, are God's gift to us. We do not deserve to be able to enjoy this. So let us manage this with a sensitivity to the delicate ecosystems. And we also consider making the resources that we use now available for future generations. So uh, that is the environmental ethics. We just do not destroy, convert this into some other use, but consider the impact of this in terms of people and the environment. Next slide. So by the way, uh, advertisement. <laughs> There was a conference, uh, International Federation of Landscape Architects on common sense. I said, why common sense? They say uh, this was for Asia Pacific, no? not just here in Cebu and Manila. But they say that look, looking at the theme was about common sense. Why common sense? Because it's high time that we look at the needs of the grassroots and the ecosystems. We just do not cater to our usual uh, wealthy clients like resort owners and all of those uh, developments, but we look at communities and we work with the grassroots. So we put together this book. If you're interested, uh, you can just call my office or Mom Pes, uh because this is a compilation of the initiatives that we have undertaken in partnership with government and communities at the barangay level. Next slide, please. So uh, education is very important. So if we want others to be one with us as partners, we have to be able to understand what's our vision for the future. What are these challenges that we are facing? What are our strengths and weaknesses, and how can we work together? So these are, uh, to the left is the Protected Area Superintendent of DNR. Mactanrak is a wastewater treatment desalination bulk water provider. And then the others are from the local government and also the academe. So 
this is a convergence of different stakeholders as, as sponsored by Philippine Business for Social Progress. And then the Archdiocese, also we have partnerships with the different parishes, with the other religious groups. And so we have these events for ecological spirituality sponsored by Sacred Heart and also uh, in partnership with the DNR, the next slide will show you. Uh, there's uh, the next slide. Uh, the renewal of marriage vows that ends with the planting of eternity within the grounds of uh, the Archbishop's residence. So uh, certain seasons like season of creation or cer certain events could be highlighted with input on environmental rehabilitation, restoration, and conservation. Next. Uh, aside from these, uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, the Archdiocese has also partnered with uh, some businesses like the establishment of uh, the Eco Park in San Fernando. This used to be a mined out area by Solid Earth Development Corporation. So what we did was we designed a seven hectare eco park in partnership with um, MGB uh, and the other partners in the parish. This is uh, during the International River Summit uh, 2018 and Archbishop Palma blessed the sample of a uh, one kilometer uh, community-based initiative to establish river park. So our rivers here in Cebu are also polluted, more so with this Butuanon River, uh, which uh, is uh, between Cebu City and Mandawe, just like this Mahiga, Subangdako River. So reviving, revitalizing the rivers is a challenge. So we have to do it with the barangay captains, the private sector, the stakeholders to agree on how what are the strategies by which we could revitalize our rivers as life-giving rivers? Next. These are planning sessions uh, in partnership with the Cebu City Rivers Management Council. Another is the convergence. This is a meeting after the Sinulog where the environment was the theme. Uh, we as NGOs came together and then uh, based on the strengths of one and one of these, what our strengths are, we agreed to work on uh, pilot projects uh, in convergence for collective impact. Next. So uh, also we, we, de we demonstrate uh, methods of composting solid waste management so there we see the change in terms of water quality management. So what the secret is really is unity, cooperation, and uh, acceptance of responsibilities to reach that common goal that we target, we agree upon. Next slide, please. Next. So these are the relief models, the maps, so people can really uh, visualize. And then we do resource use planning with the barangay constituents to be able to determine how to manage these different uh, areas within the central Cebu protected landscape, which is our life support system, conservation areas, not to be developed as built up areas. So, growth in terms of rehabilitation of the forest, cleaning the rivers, and managing the waste. These are some of the things that we agree, we agree together. Next. Next slide, please. So it needs capacity building and also 
uh, those companies that have corporate social responsibilities adopt uh, uh, forest areas for rehabilitation and conservation in partnership with us, the ENR, and Philippine Business for Social Progress. So if we all work together, nothing is impossible. Of course, with God's blessing. Next. Okay. Uh, we will just go fast. Uh, this is the climate change mitigation and adaptation. No? Uh, we need to really uh, be sensitive of how these uh, landslides, erosion, earthquake, flooding affect us, the basic necessities of uh, water and food to be able to survive in this kind of emergency. That's why we termed our conference last February as Journey, Hope, and Act in the Face of Climate Emergency. We cannot wait for tomorrow. So these are the challenges here in Cebu. Land conversion because of the rapid urbanization, the pollution, the cutting of trees, and charcoal making in the absence of a sustainable livelihood. And with the rapid urbanization comes the demand for water. And we don't have the luxury of the big dams in Luzon and Mindanao. What we have are the very uh, small dams and we exploit our groundwater by digging wells. Too much digging without regulation. That's why uh, the coastal aquifers are already salt water. Salty, you cannot drink it right away. So it's also a depletion of our fresh water on the coastal areas. And most of our settlements are living in coastal areas. So those are some challenges that we really have to face. Next. Next, please. So uh, that's the reality, the ecological crisis. If we continue to abuse the resources uh, of Mother Earth, then this is what we will experience. It's like a desert. OK. So. Uh, we also experienced storm surges and flooding, the disasters. This one is uh, the Yolanda. And so that's here in the Visayas, in Leyte, in Tacloban. And then uh, in partnership with the province, we sat down to really identify what are these issues and what what do we want to attain in terms of resilience to this climate change and, and to all of these challenges and how we are able to do this with mitigating and adaptation measures. And so uh, you see here the challenge of reduction of greenhouse gases from vehicles, from industries. And so we need to conserve and restore our damaged ecosystem. Next. Next, please. So we see the pollution uh, because people are traveling, everybody's using the car when you can use mass transit or use bicycles so you don't uh, emit these pollutants pollutants that really destroy the air quality in the urban areas. Next, please. So these are the different scenarios. Like when we were planning for what are the goals for metropolitan, um, Metro Cebu development, these are the challenges about sanitation, pollution, and so you see here the poor are the ones who are really suffering when they don't have the piped water and when there's a drought. So these are the challenges, no? Revitalization of our rivers and waste management. 
I'm involved in the environment and uh, subcommittee. So these are what we identify. And the highly vulnerable, you can see here the insular, we are made of islands, so we're surrounded by water. So the coastal flooding is also an issue aside from the storm surges, poverty, deforestation. And so governance, is the most challenging, I think, because it entails different government agencies with in partnership with the other stakeholders and the enforcement of laws. Here we just watch if there's an enforcer, if there's none, then do whatever we want, no? So, but uh, there should be strict enforcement for the good of all. Next slide, please. Next. So these are, I thought at first that these pictures about the cracks on the soil were just from the book, but then I firstly saw this kind of scenario in Wisan watershed where the silt that has been uh, deposited because of erosion and the wrong kind of vegetation has accumulated. What could have been a storage of water is all so extreme. And so this has something to do the environmental crisis. The most challenging is water. With it comes food, of course, and these disasters that we are beset with. Next slide, please. Next, please. Oh. So uh, this one is taken in Mandawe. So you see actual pictures of the basura, uh, water quality, and the waste that are generated. But with JICA, uh, JICA has helped us come up with solutions to environmental problems like for water supply in terms of septage management and in terms of uh, waste management. So these are helpful inputs. Uh, you know, in Iloilo, I asked the mayor, Mayor, what's your secret in Iloilo? Why the sudden development and uh, the beautiful scenery? He said, First, make good, make good plans. Then the second is unity from Drilon all the way to the barangay level. And then the political will to do what is morally right. Do you agree? So all this, when they had that, then investments came pouring. So I don't see why we cannot also have those uh, leadership, servant leaders who really lead us to progress. So these are the realities of the disappearance of habitats for these small organisms that contribute to the sustainability of ecosystems, birds and insects, and all of these, not just on land, but also on water and coastal salt water. Next. So these are scenarios that are really very current. Uh, when I was teaching, I, I told my students, uh, I, I assigned different rivers for each group, and then they would observe and interact with the community and give the reports and recommendations. Please. So the poor pay more. While we pay something like 25 pesos per cubic meter, they pay as much as those in the uplands pay as much as 200 per cubic meter because it's uh, brought in by truckloads. So uh, that's why when I asked Father Murphy what would be uh, the focus, uh, he said, you better look at water security and sustainability because of Integrated water resources management, it's not just water management that 
on pipe water, but we look at the sanitation and health, the wastewater management, water quality, resilience to water-related disasters, our water sources, which are our life support systems, the conservation areas, the mountains, and water governance. I, I mentioned already about the enforcement of laws no? and uh, the cooperation among different agencies. Next slide. So uh, this is a process. It's not uh, really the solution, but it's a process that we could undertake shared by the Global Water Partnership. It's integrated water resources management. So you saw those five different areas of concern. Uh, that was the guide when we formulated the provincial water authority, formulated the provincial water code. Uh, it's still for public hearing, but that's as comprehensive as it is. So it also looks at land, all resources, looking at the principles of sustainable development, having researchers with a knowledge center as the basis for decision making, not just according to the whims of this political leader, but according to the need and the science. And then the enabling environment, which are the laws and ordinances at the local level and the institutional framework. We, we have different organizations and we have our different tasks, our responsibilities to contribute for water sustainability. Next, please. Okay. Are we on track? Uh, Okay, uh, so when we look at the hydrology, uh, looking at the hydrologic cycle, when we plan, we look at the watershed as a planning unit. All of the land area that flow to the common river, that is our assumption when we do planning together with the constituents. You see here in the water cycle, uh, what's discussed in science is just evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and then evaporation again. It doesn't include the role of forest, the vegetation, evapotranspiration, and also enhancement of infiltration into the groundwater or aquifers. So those are very important resources that we have to consider. In the map here, you see that uh, these aquifers are groundwater, so they are not visible on the ground. So people don't even know how critical this water table is because what they see are just the rivers. I share to you, uh, there was a group from UNESCO that we brought to the protected areas. Uh, they were so impressed with the beautiful mountains, but they asked, where are your rivers? It's all dried up. See, because we don't have the appropriate land cover to contain our water resources. And also, uh, water management is very important in terms of regulation. Next. So, uh, when we look at the watershed, we look at the ridge to reef, no? from the upland ecosystem. Uh, to the agricultural, to the built up, as I will show you in the transect. So it involves biodiversity conservation, not just for human beings. No? We have to consider our life support in terms of utilization, in terms of conservation. Next slide. So, uh, yeah, we, we go faster. So that's from the ridge, from the uplands to the coastal areas. That is a transect of a watershed. So when you do analysis, you consider also the land cover and the way people manage these resources. Because these will all contribute to water resources uh, sustainability here. So when we cut across from ridge to reef, it cuts across forest echo zones, agricultural echo zones, built up areas, water bodies, and so it flows to the coastal. All of these zones have specific 
management uh, instruments and uh, strategies that are different like for the coastal it's different from the uplands so in the uplands you have conservation areas you could also have agroforestry but in agriculture you need uh, soil and water conservation measures for productivity and then for build up a lot of things to be studied because of how people manage their environment, especially waste management, the water bodies for sustainability, and also the coastal. I will show you just the role of uh, mangroves later on. So uh, this in Bohisan, we have our watershed tour uh, to educate students and some uh, employees who come visit the area to see the relationship between the kind of watershed, the forest cover, and the water that we harvest. Next slide, please. So here, uh, we also learn from past uh, practices which are unsustainable. Like here in Buhisan, next slide, please. Uh, Next up of teak, exotic species, Jamelina teak, mahogany, because the aim for forestry before was for timber, to be able to export them to Japan and where else. But it is not to grow the native species that used to be cover, the cover before any development. So it brings back biodiversity as well. So we resort to assisted natural regeneration now instead of just reforestation with exotic monoculture plantation, no diversity at all. So the ecotourism will also educate them. So uh, as I've mentioned, along the land resources, ecosystem, terrestrial, uh, we also look at the services, the benefits of this forest ecosystem and how we benefit not just for the uh, material uh, goods, but also for the regulation as well. And these are habitats of key biodiversity areas. No, you know, uh, the Philippines is a mega diverse country, rich in terms of biodiversity. However, it's also the point, the areas are hotspots in terms of degradation. So we really have to monitor and protect these resources that we are blessed with. Next. So that's for the land and for the aquatic, we have our rivers, our lakes, our wetlands, as well as the coastal and marine resources. So that's where we get our water and all of the harvest in terms of food related to these ecosystems. But uh, there's an additional benefit I will show you later of mangroves. Next. Tita, excuse lang po. Time check lang po, Tita. Uh, time check lang po. Around 10 minutes po, 10 minutes, last 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Thank you. We'll just go past. Next. Ah, uh, uh, like one after the other, I don't have to deal so much because I've mentioned those. Uh, local governments are supposed to have their comprehensive land use plan and disaster risk reduction to mitigate uh, the effects of climate change. No, So to be prepared is much uh, cheaper and easier than to do restoration after a disaster. So education is very important. And then we can work together for collective impact. Capacity building is as well very important. Next. Next slide. So uh, this is from the Philippine Biodiversity Management Bureau. They have put values to these uh, rich ecosystems that we have. And so if we only knew how rich we are, we would take care of them because it's not just for us, it's also for future generations. So they are God's gift with which we are supposed to take care, terrestrial as well as aquatic. Next.
So we will just show the slides anyway. These are uh, what I already mentioned. Uh, key biodiversity areas. So these areas are monitored. And so we keep track of these that are uh, very unique to our place. They are really Cebuano in effect, just like the Cebu cinnamon, the Cebu flower pecker, and the fruit bat. Uh, so there are, and the rafiesa. So here in Cebu, these are our key biodiversity areas. Okay. Next. So these are the endemic species unique to Cebu. So if we destroy the, the forest, then we destroy their habitats and it's goodbye. Habitat loss. Next. Anyway, you will have a copy of this that you can really take time to digest. Next. Knowing what biodiversity is and what is our role in terms of taking care of our environment. See how we can conserve the environment? It includes waste management here and the way we travel. So these are the beautiful sceneries. It could be richer with forest cover. So this is the rate of degradation as opposed to the benefits of what it could provide us if we had the biological diversity and conservation program. All of these benefits, including carbon sequestration coming from vegetation. With assisted natural regeneration using native species, then they can just survive. We don't have to replant again once we cut them. So assisted natural regeneration instead of monoculture plantations of exotic species. Okay. So this is the advocacy reforestation and providing livelihood for the local community. So they don't have to cut. They are our partners in boundary demarcation and biofencing. Next. Please just uh, show the slide. I just say a line for each. So the difference between exotic species and the native species and the benefits, what the roots do, what the leaves do. And so the richness of biodiversity is very first and foremost. We coexist. So conservation is very important. Uh, it needs education, the engineering component, but very important is the enforcement of law. Political will to do what is morally right. Next. So even for food, not chemicals, but organic and integrated farming systems. Uh, where you can use the resources within. You don't have to import chemicals and genetically modified uh, fertilizers and all that. Okay.
So uh, to be able to uh, adapt to climate change, uh, what World Wildlife Fund advocates is put your natural systems in place, rehabilitate, restore, and then the second is also look at your food sources because that's very important for survival. So without much ado, I would like to thank you for your attention and the details can be discussed at a community level of what's doable, what I can personally do, and what my family can do and the rest of the community. And this will all echo to the rest of the constituents. Thank you very much. And I hope I was able to share with you our experiences here in Cebu. Thank you very much, Tita Bajing. Palakpakan naman natin si Tita Bajing. My pleasure. So, and uh, you know, um, marami po talaga kami natutunan dito sa inyong presentation ngayon. And all the more we got convinced that uh, Father Murphy has a lot of very talented, intelligent, and generous people serving in the serving the people of Cebu. Uh, this We will be opening this time now for some questions, especially questions coming from the region. So baka yung mga taga-Digos, taga-Maasin, and especially the people from Cebu would want to ask some questions that really affect them. But while you're, uh, you can either put it in the chat box, pwede po kayo magsulat dyan. And while you're writing, okay, uh, sasabihin lang natin na uh, maraming taong naiingit sa Cebu. Kasi sabi nila, malaki pang opportunity dyan. At saka marami pwede pang mangyari dyan. And uh, realizing na yung palang development, eh hindi naman palaging positive. And now, humahabol din tayo okay, in the, uh, to, to have mitigation and uh, adaptation and capacity building para sa grupo. So please write your questions para po masagot ni Tita Bajing. Uh, Hina-highlight lang natin kanina, make good plans, unity among stakeholders, and the political will to make those things happen. Okay? Um, we also would like to welcome Archbishop Palma, who is with us now. So, gusto okay. lang natin na uh, iyak ng alin sa Archbishop Palma. Welcome po, Archbishop. Okay, thank you, Jun. Uh, okay. So, are there any questions at this time? Baka po meron kayong questions. You can either write it on the chat box or um, pwede rin naman kung makikita ko yung mga kamay ninyo. Uh, you can also raise your hands dun sa reaction box po sa baba. May reaction box dito. You can raise your hands uh, and uh, I will see them and I will call on you. May question po. Si, uh, may sasabihin si Bishop Pabilio. Yes, Bishop. Hindi naman ito question, ngunit reaction lang because I was struck no, by uh, what Tita Bajinga said that uh, we, we should know that we are rich and, though, and so we take care of the richness that we have. Pero ano ba yung richness natin? Alam niyo po, sa, ang mga tao pumupunta sa Italy para makita yung kanila mga monuments. No, yung mga tao ay... Uh, pumupunta sa ibang cities tulad ng New York, tulad ng London para makita yung mga buildings nila no? na magaganda. Pero dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, hindi naman pumupunta o dito sa buildings natin, sa cities natin. Wala na ba yung mamayabang, no? ang Manila, ang Cebu na katangi-tangi sa cities natin. Pupunta sila dito sa atin because of our nature, no? because of our beaches, because of our rivers. Richness natin ay kaan. No? Tinatransform natin ito. Sinisira. No? Kaya uh, ang nature natin, sinisira sa magitan ng ating mga mining. No? So, bababayan sa baba. Ayaw mula sa bundok ay bababayan sa ridge. No? Bababayan sa reef natin. Bababayan sa mga kuha natin. At nasisira. No? Kaya Kaya yan po yung sa ating sustainable na richness natin, yung ating kalikasan. Kaya dapat talagang pangalagaan natin and each one of us should be committed about that. 
Please should not consider it development na sinisira ang kalikasan. Parang sinisira mo yung riches natin na ipagpapalit sa isang bagay na lilipas lang. Pero ang kalikasan kapag na natili yan, everybody will uh, uh, will uh, take um will uh, be blessed by it kasama yung mga anak natin. Pero kapag nasira na yan, namina na yan, nakuha na yung ating mga sand, yung mga black sand natin, no, kawawa yung next generation. Wala na. Thank you, Bishop. Mamba, Tita Bajing, may mga comments dito coming from uh, um, Tita Rosa Rita Mariano. Siya po ang National President ng Catholic Women's League. Sabi niya, napakagandang presentation. Maraming salamat po for its availability later on. Ang ibig sabihin niya, uh, hinihingi natin yung document ninyo and we will distribute and make it available later po. Thank you to Ma'am Rosa, uh, Doktora Rosa Rita. Also, um, may comments pa po dito uh, from si Father Murphy. Nakabalik na yata. Thank you, Ma'am Bajing. And uh, from, the, from Lori Manalansan, that was a very informative and detailed discussion on our natural resources and the need to really care for them as we have started to overlook. Salamat na po, uh, Tita Bajing. Meron po bang may mga questions pa? Tinitina po yung inyong mga kamay, kung iyo kayo naka-raise ng kamay dito. Okay. Yung iba nagkakamot lang at nag-aayos ng buhok. Yan, si... And also, if, uh, if Father Murphy is here, if he would like to say something, Father Murphy is the uh, uh, priest in charge okay, uh, of that commission on uh, environmental concerns for, this, for Cebu. At napakarami niyang trabaho sa Archdiocese. So if there's anything Father Murphy would like to say, we would like to acknowledge him and uh, ask him to say something also. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, now we are now in the new normal because of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. This uh, uh, situation, it calls for more uh, eagerness or, or answer on our part to be more uh, critical in terms of our environmental situation. So, if I may uh, say that the Archdiocese, the, under the leadership of Archbishop Palma, we uh, entered a MOA with the stakeholders headed by the uh, Secretary of Environment and Natural Resources, General Simatu, to the Mahiga River. This is our way of moving forward in this time of pandemic. So there are a lot of challenges as well, not only the pandemic, we need to address the environmental issues that is uh, constantly uh, being there a uh, needed uh, solution. So if given uh, the opportunity, if I may uh, present five slides, how can do together as a church and how can we uh, collaborate as well with the whole uh, community as one, uh, as one uh, community in this environment where we live in. So if I may, uh, Brother Jun, to share my screen for a while. Yes, po. Brother Mars will give you permission to share. Po. Yeah, I can do this in two minutes. Po. Thank you. So the problem that constantly haunts us now is the plastic pollution in our ocean. So as we all know, the Philippines is the world's third largest plastic polluter. So the problem here is indiscriminate disposal, where tons of plastics uh, are now in the ocean. And these plastics 
has been mistaken as microplankton for the fishes to eat. And unknowingly, we also eat plastics because of the fish uh, we, we eat from, the, from nature. So, I, sorry, sorry. So this is the challenge where we are now in. So we need to address this plastic pollution in the rivers going to the ocean. So that's why the Archdiocese of Cebu uh, uh, gives its share to find a solution for this uh, plastic pollution. What is our solution? in ocean, we're in people bringing in their plastic wastes to the collection point in the church, in the school, in the communities, where in people receive rewards uh, or essentials to be bartered in exchange for plastic. And these plastics will go to our recycling and creative hub, where in we will reproduce this plastics into eco blocks for the builders, developers, and landscapers. And this will be used for affordable houses made of eco blocks. And also the houses will again generate plastic and the people having a clear uh, responsibility and a renewed motivation to, to take care of the environment. So this is a circular economy, why we need to uh, observe this in order to address the plastic pollution. So uh, the, the problem here is the collection, not just the, the packaging. So we center on the collection. Una. So there are a lot of areas to address this plastic pollution. One here is the collection. So the impact of Project Clean Ocean through the synergy of collective action, like the LICO of the whole country, where we collaborate together, work together, serving the gender inclusive, sustainable innovation, active involvement of communities. And then it provides, uh, it generates income and also livelihood for other uh, members of the community. And most especially, we have a conscious and responsible communities observing this, uh, uh, this dimension or this direction. Driving marine leader uh, our end in this project. We have, as of now, through our PDOs, through our ecosystem, we have machineries and then the ecosystem of ecological advocates coming from different dioceses, religious men and women congregations, the CICM and the CM and other foundations working together for the welfare of our environment. And what we can make out of the plastic to become, to transform it into eco block. And what we need now is to put up at least 96 barter centers to be distributed in all uh, provinces or in all uh, areas of the country and need this segregation storage areas per area and three recycling and creative hubs, one in Luzon, Visayas and in Mindanao. And the power of project Clean Ocean depends on the strength of uh, numbers wherein we believe that together we can be stronger and we can make a better world. So this is the, the dream wherein we can work together, wherein we can make of something the pollution in the ocean or in the rivers into something useful. So this is what 
we envision what we need to achieve and to pilot it in Mahinga River ecosystem. So this is one way of uh, addressing the issue, uh, especially the pollution in terms of plastic in the ocean. So with that, thank you, Bob. Thank you very much, Father Murphy. I know that you have a lot on your hands, so good luck po sa inyong mga advocacies. Um, we have comments here coming from uh, Maasin, from Jerome, sabi niya, Thank you, Mamba Jing. Very timely because the Diocese of Maasin will be launching the Laudato Si in preparation for the 500-year anniversary of the first Easter Mass in Limasawa. Ako na inspire po sila. And also, from Relinda Soriano, thank you. From Digos, we, have, we are now experiencing flood and we are campaigning for eco bricks and tree planting. So congratulations daw po. And of course, from Dr. Bulyester, thank you for giving us a true X-ray. Thank you for giving us a true X-ray, ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI of the true picture of the real situation of the besides and then environmental anatomy and condition. Okay? I concur, Doctor. Ayan, ha? Ang ganda, ang ganda sinasabi ni Dr. Bully, sir. Okay. So, um, we're really very encouraged by the presentation of uh, Tita Bajing, okay? And uh, how we wish we have more time. But at uh, this point, talagang medyo uh, gusto lang nating mapakinggan si Archbishop Palma. Uh, again, alam ko, uh, hinihintay natin makapagsalita uh, si Archbishop Palma just to say a short message and, um, and also to, to give some blessings as we continue to work towards responding to the care of our common home and to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. So if I could turn it over to Archbishop Palma, pwede po ba namin kayo makanyayahan? <laughs> Thank you, June. Uh, my apologies, it's only now I came in. No? I came from a fiesta. This time with you out of the city now. No. But just the same, I'm very happy, uh, of course, with the uh, still very able Bishop Abilio. No? Uh, Laiko, Laiko is moving no? despite COVID. Uh, we are performing and, of course, the meeting through Zoom is a way of telling brothers and sisters that not even COVID could stop us from, from thinking and, and doing, you know, and, and precisely responding uh, proactively to the situation. Uh, I, I'd like to thank all who participate in this Zoom meeting, of course, from LICO and various associations and movements. Uh, there, are, there are two things I'd like just to, to uh, encourage everyone, namely, we can only pray, you know, that uh, that vaccine or whatever, no, maybe maybe available soon and uh, COVID, you know, will end, but we do not know when, so that we will be back to normal as we often pray. Because I believe all throughout our country and many parts of the world, because of the situation, <clears throat> Many are experiencing not only the pandemic of sickness, but also the pandemic of hunger. Uh, we, when we roam around, we know that people are saying, uh, we wish you know, it will be over so that we can be back to work, be back to normal. That's why we say, we make every effort to try to survive through means that are within our uh, ways, you know, uh, feeding and of course, various ways of reaching out. Uh, this thing should continue. Uh, we would like to, to believe that despite COVID, sana naman, sana. No? Hindi mamatay yung tao sa gutom, no? because kung mamatay sa COVID, mamatay pa sa gutom, that's very sad. No? So we will survive, and after that, we revive. Uh, the other thing I'd, I'd like to say now is, and this is very much related to, to uh, LICO, and uh, I'm sure Bishop Broderick knows this 
uh, by heart. When we plan for the fifth centenary of our beginning, I mean, of Christianity, we define the the focus of 2021 as Missio Ad Gentis. Put plainly, it simply means uh, here we try to encourage encourage people, encourage uh, each one to think of going agentes, not to other places, to bring the good news. And, and that we continue. But, but now, and this is what I'd like to underline, especially, I repeat, no, for, I mean, for all of us, the Holy Father is very strong, not only to the word Mishu agentes, meaning we think of how we can bring the good news to people outside our country, but he is very strong on what he said as miss you ad extra. It simply means, di ba, meron tayo mga associations, Focus for Christ, BCBP, CFM, etc. Charismatics, no? And of course, we think of our own faith communities. But to the extent that we think and we do things within our faith communities, sabi ni Pope, Self-referential lang to, ad entra lang to. No? So we think of those outside our faith communities, those in the periphery, no? the many who are poor and rejected and neglected outside of our own circles. And I think this is a very important reminder, even as we look forward to the culmination to the celebration. Of course, we started the celebration of the fifth centenary. Again, I just mentioned this. I think many of you know this, no? but what used to be UNTA, no? the culminating activities in April next year, 2021, man, no? would only be the launching. By launching, I mean like Easter Sunday, we launch the fifth centenary celebration, meaning it will not end in April as first thought, but it will start in April and continue up to 2022, no, the fifth centenary, which means that many activities will be programmed in that perspective. If if there is any good thing about this is mahaba yung yung mga celebration and activities natin. So these are two things I just would like to to underline, no? Out and of course in Thanksgiving for as I said, no, despite despite COVID, thank God through mass media, this Zoom meeting is available. We will survive. We let's try to survive COVID. No? For a time Cebu is the epicenter. But I it on never mind. We will work out now. But then after that, we try to revive in a way that people would say, yes, nakikita po yung ating solidarity, yung ating pagkakaisa. And the other thing that I mentioned is, for for some time, we were only talking Mishu agendas outside of our country. But now, we also say Mishu ad extra, outside our own little faith communities in the periphery of our society. That too should fo uh, should be a place where we focus mission. So ito lang po, kasi alam ko, <clears throat> I've been meeting for so long. Thank you very much and together we pray for God's continued guidance upon all of us. And of course, upon our people who believe that even if these things are happening, hindi tayo pinabayaan the Lord. And when we trust in Him, and when we also trust in what each one, what all can do for the sake of all of us, then we will survive and eventually we will revive. Salamat po. Archbishop, can we ask you to lead a prayer, please? Uh, are we closing now or what? I'll just pray. Uh, if that is the case, I'll pray because with apologies, no, we'll do some taping for tomorrow's gospel. The name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity of our Zoom meeting 
in Laiko through the able servant leadership of Bishop Abilio and our many lay leaders who are anointed and who are dedicated in wonderful ways to serve you, to serve our community. And sisters and brothers, make a difference in the lives of people, knowing that we are all brothers and sisters. We thank you for this opportunity. And we pray that despite the problems that confront us, we will be guided and strengthened that going from our resources, from the blood in our hearts, from creativity that we can do, and from knowing that only when we share out of love, then we can pass through these places. We pray, Lord, bless our efforts. May we believe in your love, believe also that, yes, COVID will end, but your love will never end. May we who believe in the love of Mama Mary, we, the Pueblo Amante de Maria, continue to trust in her. We have had 19 healing rosaries. We know all of this would eventually lead to real healing, not only of COVID, but the healing of all and everything that blocks family, uh, friendship, and solidarity. Lord, heal our land as we pray. And bless all of us so that as always strengthened by your efforts and sustained by your love, we may become true sisters and brothers to each one, especially those who need most of your love and mercy and our attention. And may the Lord bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po, Archbishop. Okay. Salamat po, Archbishop. Mm. <laughs> you look fine. <laughs> I am fine, I am fine. <laughs> yes, well, yes. <laughs> we are about to end our time together uh, unless uh, our Bishop Pabilio would like to say something. Uh, yes. Uh, may, may dalawa na akong sasabihin. Una sa lahat, salamat sa presentation no, um, ng uh, ating uh, presenter. Uh, uh, ang presentation niya, una, nagpapakita po sa atin na napakaraming kailangan malaman about ecology. Napakayaman ng kanyang mga slides. Kaya thank you for sharing these slides. Ang isang slide, maring isang talk na yan. Napakayaman na pwede yung sabihin. Kaya talagang we are challenged to know more about this important topic. At pangalawa po, ang nagpresent sa atin ay isang lay person. No, at um, nararapat man lamang that she is an expert no, on this. Kasi yan naman talaga ang turf ng lay people about the temporal uh, realities. Kaya dito, nagpakadalubhasa no, ang ating presenter dito sa about ecology. At ang iba naman siguro sa atin, magpakadalubhasa rin. No, expertise in certain aspects of the life of uh, the people in the world. Sa finance, sa economics, sa politika, sa sports. So that they can share. Kaya napakaganda po that it's a lay person na pakira sa atin na pwede magbigay ng kanyang sarili on this aspect. Nung nakinig po tayo sa Mindanao, ganun din, no, about interreligious dialogue, lay person din na nagpakadalubasa sa interreligious dialogue. So hindi lang kailangan na makuha natin sa pare o sa madre, no, pati na sa lay faithful makukuha natin yan. Tapos panghuli, hinahamon ko po kayo na sa lunes ay ang sona sana po makinig kayo sa sona at hindi lang makinig, ngunit suriin ang mga nangyayari sa ating bansa. Kasi sa sona ay dapat pinapakita sa atin ano bang nangyayari sa bansa natin. Katama ba ang analisis ng ating gobyerno? Tama ba ang kanilang pagtugon sa problema ngayon? Kaya dapat po makiisa tayo. At least uh, we are concerned. At least we want to know what's happening. And we are investigating deeply no para po makatugon tayo sa pangyayaring ito. So, yan lang po ang gusto kong ipahayag sa inyo. Salamat po. Maraming salamat, Bishop Pabilio. So, inuulit po natin, manood kayo ng SONA sa lunes at suriin. Pangalawa, tuloy-tuloy din po yung ating weekly conversations. So, susulatan po namin kayo muli. At pangatlo po, hihingan din namin kayo ng feedback kung ano yung na-experience in the past para po, lalo pa naming mapagbuti ito. 
As we end, we'd like to thank, of course, the uh, regional officers of the Sangguniang Laiko ng Pilipinas, si Sister Fe and si Dr. Uh, Rene Bulliser. Thank you for your uh, diagnostic intervention, uh, Dr. Bulliser. Nakakatuwa, <laughs> no? <laughs> and uh, would like to end by saying that um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Bang, ganda nun, ha? <laughs> Pero climate injustice anywhere is also a threat to climate injustice everywhere. So yung narinig po natin sa Cebu, okay, ay mangyayari din po at nangyayari sa iba't ibang lugar. Kaya kailangan natin matutunan kung paano matutugunan ang mga ganyang klaseng problema. And this all will be a response to the challenge of caring for our common home because everything is interconnected. Sana po inapaglingkuran kayo ng palatong tunang ito. As always, Dr. Lau. Pwede <laughs> <laughs> okay. po. Maraming salamat po at magpapapicture po si, uh, si uh, Brother Mars. So kung pwedeng umiti daw kayo, open nyo ang inyong mga uh, video at umiti lang kayo kasi magpipicture lang po tayo. And i-email po namin yung mga materyales na hinihingi po ninyo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. <laughs> God is telling all of us right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, be still and know that I am God. So how will you recognize a true Christian? The true Christian is always grateful. The favorite word of the true Christian is thank you. Because for the true Christian, everything is a gift. When you die to yourself, forget yourself, and give yourself as a gift to another person, that, my friend, is when you taste authentic permanent joy. This is Faith Watch TV, today's leading Catholic online TV. We at Faith Watch create all original content ranging from reflections from the church's bishops and priests, lessons and catechesis, testimonies of your favorite inspirational speakers, talk shows, and news programs. Powered by Areopagus Communications, Faith Watch TV aims to deliver to you the best and the latest inside and around the Catholic Church, neatly packaged for the Filipino Catholic. Faith Watch TV, today's leading online TV, your Catholic channel.